The subject of today's video is a sibling group that have achieved global recognition and secured its place in music history. The Pointer Sisters are a sister group that are undoubtedly one of the best top 5 female groups of all time. Before we get started in today's video, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. Ruth, Anita, Patricia, otherwise known as Bonnie and June, together with their brothers Aaron and Fricks, was all born and raised on Oakland's west side. Their mother Sarah Porner was a housekeeper and their father Elton Porner was a minister. Their parents was from Arkansas and as children they would frequently visit their grandparents there. Their parents were strict and very religious and often attempted to shield their children from the devil's work, which means no jury, cosmetics, dancing, movies, and especially no music. The sisters, they found their vocals at a young age, singing songs that they heard on televisions from their parents in church. Ruth was said to be the rebellious one, and she set the tone for the sisters. It was also said that she was the one that was curious about everything. As the sister grew older, they developed an interest in different genres, and Ruth, Anita, and Bonnie they would graduate from Oakland Technical High School, while June would graduate from Castlemont High School. Ruth and Anita was married with kids and employed full time after graduating high school. As for the younger two, they opted to follow a music career in show business, where they formed a duo and dubbed themselves as either Pointers, a pair, or the pair. Not sure which one. By 1969, Anita. She had departed her job as a secretary to join her younger sisters, officially becoming the Pointer Sisters. The first few years, they was traveling performing background vocals for musicians like Grace Slick, Betty Davis, and Elvin Bishop, among others. The sisters, they were just living the moment and having a hit record meant nothing to them at the time. All they wanted to do was have fun. In 1971, the sisters, they was discovered by singing background for Bishop in a nightclub which led them to their first deal with Atlantic Records. They record a few songs with Atlantic that didn't chart, including Don't Try to Take the Fifth. I find myself in an awful situation. And Destination No More Heartaches, among many more. Ruth watched how her sisters was having fun. And by 1972, she felt that this was the life that she needed. Now, Ruth, she was staying in on occasions for June, but by December of 1972, she had quit her job and joined her sisters full time. Now, after that contract expired with Atlantic, they would sign a new deal with Blue Thumb Records. The sisters wanted to stand out and be distinct by singing what they wanted rather than what was popular at the time. They would develop their own sound, combining jazz and bebop. In terms of visuals, they gathered a variety of old 1940 clothing, which gave them a unique appearance. In 1973, the sisters, they would release their debut album, which peaked at number 13 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 3 on the Billboard Top R&B Album Charts, selling over 500,000 copies, earning a gold certification. Yes, we can. And Wayne Dane Doodle was the two big singles from the album. Because from their retro appearance, the sisters, they became crowd favorites, inspiring many audience members to dress up like them. That following year, they would release a second album titled That's a Plenty, which peaked at number 82 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 33 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts, selling over 500,000 copies earning a gold certification. This album had two charting singles with Steam Heat. When we were kids in Oakland, sitting on and Fairy Tale. I'll pack up all my things and walk away. The sisters, they will receive a Grammy for best country performance by a duet or a group in 1975. Anita and Bonnie that was also nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Country Songs as Songwriters. Their third album, Steppin', was released in 1975 and it had peaked at number 1 on the Billboard Top R&B Album Charts and number 22 on the Billboard 200 Charts. How long? Mm. 
and Going Down Slowly are two of the album's top two charted singles. Don't need The sisters, they made a cinematic debut in the 1976 film Car Wash, and they also made a, the Pinball Number Count song for Sesame Street that same year. The sisters, they were released their fourth album title Having a Party in November of 1977, as it peaked at number 76 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 51 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. This album ended up being the last album that featured all four sisters. Now, despite the significant success in the sisters' career, the conflict started to rise in the Pointer household. As Bonnie, she started to consider going solo. In June, she started to miss several performances due to health issues. Jeffy Bowen, a Motown producer, and Bonnie was dating at the time, and they were eventually married in 1978. Bonnie, she would part raised with her sisters later that year, in 1976 and joined Motown where she will have a brief but successful career. In a 1990 interview, Anita, she recalls saying, we did a show that night she left, but after that, we just stopped. We thought it wasn't gonna work without Bonnie. Dennis Edwards, who was a member of the Temptations and Ruth was married by 1977, and they would have a child named Issa or Issa, who was born that following year in 1978. The Pointer Sisters, they reduced their traveling schedule as they grieved over the loss of their sister. Ruth, she was aboard recovering from a child at this time, and Anita and June, they were discussing releasing solo albums. Anita, she had already had an album that was recorded for ABC Records, but it never saw the day of light. When the stage eventually called, the remaining sisters would perform as a trio, and they essentially began a new start, and they would choose to abandon the 1940s gig and take a more modern approach. June would marry William Oliver Whitmore II in July of 1978. Now the sisters, they would sign a new deal with Planet Records and that same year they would release a fifth album titled Energy. This album would sell over 500,000 copies and be certified gold and it will also peak at number 13 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 9 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Fire! You turn on Everybody's a star. Who could rain and chase the dust away? And happiness was among the three major hits that this album produced. Happiness. You're full of sweet surprises. Happiness. The sisters they would release a sixth album that following year titled Priority, which had a sharper edge rock feel to it. And it had peaked at number 72 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 44 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. This album would have two hit singles with Blind Faith. Do you remember back in 64? And Who Do You Love? The sisters, they started to have significant commercial success during the 80s with special things being the seventh album by the sisters they were released in, in 1980. It would peak at number 19 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums Charts and number 34 on the Billboard 200 Charts. The four significant hits from this album are He's So Shy, When I first saw him standing there I long to speak but Could I Be Dreaming? I can feel you touching me we got the power, and where did the time go? Where did the time go? Never saw it pass. The eighth album by the sisters, Black and White, was released that following year, and it achieved a gold certification. It peaked at number 12 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 19 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. The ninth album was released in 1982, and it reached its highest point on the Billboard 200 charts, peaking at number 24, and number 59 on the Billboard R&B album charts. This album will have two successful singles with American Music. I'm moving to the stereo. If it makes and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. Now the sister's biggest album was released in 1983 titled Breakout. It went triple platinum and it peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 charts 
and number six on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. This album had five hit singles, starting with "I Need You." Automatic. Look what you're doing to me. I'm a jelly at your whim. All of my. Jump for my love. Tell me how you want me. I'm so excited. Remix. I want to squeeze you, please you. I just can't get enough. And, it... and Neutron Dance. I don't want to take it anymore. The sisters, they signed a new contract with RCA in 1985, earning a Grammy for the hits Jump and Automatic in the process. The sisters, they would receive an AMA for Favorite Group and Favorite Group Video Artists in 1985 and 1986. They would release three more albums over the course of the rest of the 80s, starting with Contract that was released in 1985, which peaked at number 25 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 11 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts selling over a million copies, earning a platinum certification. The 1986 album, Hot Together, which peaked at number 48 on the Billboard 200 charts, and Serious Slamming, that peaked at 152 on the Billboard 200 charts. After RCA, the sisters, they would sign a Motown, but they think that Motown was unsuccessful, and to be fair, Motown, it wasn't performing as it once was. In the 90s, they would release another album titled Right Rhythm. Also, in 1993, they would release another album titled Only Sisters Can Do That through SBK Records. A star was awarded to the Supporting Sisters in 1994 on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And then next year, they would go back to their Jagsy original sound. The Sisters would perform as one of the closer acts during the 1996 Olympus that was set in Atlanta. They would also perform in the national tour of the musical Ain't Misbehaving in 1995 throughout 1996. And during these tour dates, June, she came to the full close as she started to miss several performances. Behind the multi-million dollar success of the Pointer Sisters, there was a secret. June Pointer was addicted to crack cocaine. Now she talks to our Mark Steinis about the lows of being high in this Entertainment Tonight cover story. As the Pointer Sisters took off, June turned to alcohol, cocaine, Valium, and Secondal. Even her proudest moments were clouded by her substance abuse. 1994, mm -hmm. the Pointer Sisters received that coveted star on the Walk of Fame. Oh, I remember that morning getting drunk as fast as I possibly could. And then you end up being addicted to crack. Well, I'm, I've lost a lot. I lost uh, money. I lost my home, and I lost. Uh, like, how? Give me an idea. How much money you blew on? No, probably about. Trip. I'd say about twenty thousand. Just on on, on the crack. Yeah, in the last... now just the last three three years. The most important thing that I did lose was my self pride that I have back now. She has that pride back because of a 30-day stint at the Promises West L.A. Rehabilitation Center. And after 50 days of sobriety, she says she owes a debt of gratitude to her sisters, who forced her out of their act with promises that she could return only if she kicked the habit. Ruth Darter and Issa started to perform with the group in 2002. June and Bonnie, they would begin performing as a duo on June 9th, 2002. After being hired by a promoter, who used an image to advertise them as the Pointer Sisters, Ruth and Anita had sued the promoter and everyone who was involved who was expecting the sisters to be there. But it was false advertising as they was using the pictures of the trio instead of building it as being June and Bonnie. Later, the duo that was hired for another event where this event was properly billed as June and Bonnie Porter. The Pointer Sisters was inducted to the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2005. The sisters, they will see they share a death. Anita, she will lose her only child due to cancer in 2003. And the sisters, they will lose their mother in November of 2000. Now June, she struggled with drugs the majority of her career. And on February 27th, 2006, June, she will suffer from a stroke. While at the hospital, she was given the news that she had cancer which had spread to her breast, colon, liver, and bones. Sadly, June, 
June passed away on, on April 11th, 2006 at the age of 52. The death of June would divide the sisters as Bonnie went on Entertainment Tonight on May 4th, 2006 to air out Anita and Ruth, saying the other sisters have not fulfilled June's burial wishes, instead ha having her cremated because it was cheaper. Bonnie also stated that the sisters had not let her ride in the family car at the funeral. Anita and Ruth responded that Bonnie demanded to rejoin the group and was upset when she has been rejected and that June had left no instructions for her burial. The sisters seemed to be estranged for Bonnie until she joined Anita on the Idol radio show in 2007. On June 8th, 2020, Bonnie she would pass away at the age of 69. And sadly, on New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2022, Anita, she would pass away from cancer at the age of 74. The sisters' material were among hundreds of artists that had lost everything in the 2008 Universal Fire. Today, Ruth still has her hectic traveling schedule playing all over the world with her daughter and granddaughter. The best part is that Ruth has an amazing career spanning over 40 years and she can look back on memories with her sisters that has been filled with incredible accolades, unending cheers, and many memorable performances. Now, before we head up out of here, I have one question for you guys. Let me know in the comment section below. Would you like to see an individual video on each sister where I could dive deeper into, into their individual lives? Just let me know in the comment section below.